There are so many examples of wonderful court cases from ancient Mesopotamia. And the one I chose to focus on was a court case between two women. There was a woman named Geme Suen, and she had lent a lot of silver, a whole lot of silver, to another woman whose name we don't know. She's only called the wife of Orlugel. But she, it was, the, it was a, a loan from one woman to another. And what, the reason we know about this is that they went to court because Geme Suen said that the wife of Orlugel had not paid back the full amount. And I love this court case because it tells us so much about the way the judicial system worked. They really, the Mesopotamians, in fact, throughout the ancient Middle East, they, they really valued justice. They really wanted people to um, have their day in court and for justice to be served, you know, that they wanted the right thing to be done. And what seems to have happened is that Geme Suen said that the wife of Orlugal had not paid her the full amount and that it was owed. And so they went to court. And this little court case, it's a tiny little document, and you can read it you know, in, in a very short time, well, in cuneiform, but it, it's even translated into English. It's very short, but it tells us a lot. So what happened is that Geme Suen says, you haven't paid back the full amount. And the wife of Orlugal responds, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she basically says, no, we've already had a court case about this. It's already been decided. The, um, it was decided in my favor. And so-and-so, and she names the, the, the man, dis was the commissioner of the case, and, and he agreed. And the commissioner of the case is right there in the courtroom, or it might have been a courtyard, but wherever they were. And he says, it's a lie. So he stands up and he tells um, uh, um, Geme Suen and Orlugal, the wife of Orlugal, no, the wife of Orlugal is lying. That did not happen in the last court case. And so the judge of this case, who we don't know his name, he decides that the children of Orlugal are going to have to swear an oath that their mother is telling the truth. And they refuse. They won't do it, which clearly means that they, she was not telling the truth. And at that point, she then confesses. And she says, yes, it's true. I still owe money. And then her son even confesses it's true. I still owe money. And that's the, the end of the court case. But it tells us that several things. First, there is this very formal process that they can go through, that it isn't just a matter of sort of hollering at each other and saying, you owe me money. No, I don't. You know, they can go to court and they can get this settled. There are these officials, um, judges, who are in the position of making the decision. In this case, it was in the 21st century BCE, and it was in the city of Uma. And oddly enough, in Uma, they would only have one judge on a case. Mostly, they would have a panel of judges, five or seven, and it would be a decision of the uh, majority. In this case, we just have the one judge. But he is weighing the evidence. He's sort of, well, what evidence is there? Well, there are witnesses, and the witnesses are the children of um, Orlugal and the wife of Orlugal. And he asks them, so does your mother still owe money? And this is when it gets really interesting because they are not willing to lie for her because they have to do it under oath. And in our courts, when we say, you know, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, you don't assume that if you lie, God is going to kill you on the spot. But they had this very, very powerful belief that the gods were watching everything and that if you swore in the name of Shamash, which they would have had to do, the sun god, that they were telling the truth and they weren't, the punishment from the sun god was going to be way worse than what they might have benefited from lying on the part of their, their mother. And so very often, and this is what happened in this case, they simply refused to swear the oath. And that's enough for the judge to know she's lying because they would refuse. So there's a lot of things. You've got contracts, you've got a loan, you've got judges, and you've got the other aspects which make it different from our world, which is there are no lawyers. The women represented themselves. Um, and you have no jury. They didn't have a jury system. They had judges who, who were well-trained. They were really trying to get at the, at the sort of bottom of the case. And then we also have the fact that the laws of the time, and that this was the very earliest known set of laws, which are from the reign of Ornama, who was in the 21st century BCE. He wrote about exactly this issue of lying under oath. And one of the laws was what would happen if you were called as a witness and you lied and what fine you would have to pay. And so I was able to also bring in the, the laws. Interestingly enough, they don't seem to have paid much attention to the laws. They, they're never quoted in court cases. They never say, because the law says such and such, I have ruled this. But they probably represent legal precedents. 
and therefore they show us again how the, the system worked. And I think that case gives you a sense of what we can learn about these individuals and how a single individual's experience, in this case, Geme Suen wanting to get her money back, can tell you a lot about what was going on at the time period and the bigger issues in this case about the judicial system and also a little bit about the religion and how powerfully they believed in the gods.